Hey everyone, today I want to talk about kerning in DaVinci Resolve version 16. So first of all, what is kerning? Well, kerning refers to the space between letters. And we're going to be talking about monospace fonts, we're going to be talking about variable width fonts as well. And we're going to see kerning in action. So by the end of this video, you'll have a very good understanding of what it is. So let's get right into it. I have a fresh workspace here, so I go under Titles. I'm going to select a text plus and I'm going to drag that down into my timeline currently in the cut page but we're going to quickly head over to Fusion to do most of our work here in Fusion. So we're set up here in Fusion and very quickly I'm just going to add a black background here just to make things a little bit easier to see. If you take a look up in the top right you'll see a number of videos that are good prerequisites for this video but let's get right into it. So what I'm going to do I'm just going to grab a black background I'm going to grab a merge node over here I'm also going to, um, I have this template here, which is my first um, text plus node. I'm going to bring in another text plus node here. And what we're going to do, we're going to talk about monospace versus variable width fonts. And we're going to show how we can play with the controls in these text plus um, nodes to get whatever effect that we desire. So let's get uh, into it here. Let's grab this text node. I'm going to rename this here. I'm going to call this monospace. And I'm going to come down to our second one here, and I'm going to call this one variable width. There we go. And under monospace, this is, I'm going to set this up on viewer number one right now. So I can either click this little note here, or I can use one on the keyboard. And I'm going to come up to the dual viewer here. So now I have monospace node showing up here. There's nothing because we have nothing in there. I'm going to type courier mono space. So we're going to be using courier. I'm going to select courier now. Courier new because courier new is a mono space font and we're going to get into that and show you exactly what that means in, in just a moment here. Uh, for my variable width one which is piped to media out right now so it's already showing over here. I'm going to use Times New Roman. We'll stick with some, uh, some pretty popular fonts. And I'm going to call that times variable width and I'm just going to bring the size down a little bit there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this link to media out. I am going to add another merge node here and I'm going to merge these two fonts together. Then I'm going to merge the background with our two fonts and I'm going to bring that over to media out. Okay, so I've just set up our workspace a little bit so we can see a little bit more of these fonts here. So what I'm going to do to show what uh, monospace versus variable width uh, font is, is I'm going to use a feature of the text plus node. So if you, if, if you select on, I'm selecting a monospace right now, if you come over here um, to this toolbar over here and you come to this fourth one here called shading, click on that and what you'll see is this shading elements section here. If you on the select elements drop down, you see eight items. These eight items are fully customizable. They can be whatever you want them to be. Um, and you can set up things like outlines, drop shadows, that type of stuff. But the very first el element by default, it's set up to, if you look down to this properties, it's set up this first character here is selected. So it's the text fill essentially. So text fill right now is white. That's why we see this as white. So I want to keep this because we want to see our font. So that's good. So we're going to come down to element number two. Two through eight are all off by default, so I'm going to enable this right now. Enable it, it's called by default red outline because it gives us a red outline and that's because this text outline here is selected and the color is set to red. And again, these are fully customizable including the name here. So this name we can change to whatever we want, but the point of this tutorial is not how these shading elements work. It's really just to set something up to visualize how these bounding boxes around each of these characters look. So what we can do to do that is we can come over here to this fourth one here. It's a border outline. I'm going to click that and I'm going to change that color to something a little calmer. And there we go. So we have that gray outside. So what, what, what this really shows us is the bounding boxes outside of each letter. And you'll notice with this monospace font, all those boxes are exactly the same size. Let's do the same thing with our Times, variable, or Times New Roman font. And what you'll see immediately is all those bounding boxes are completely different sizes. If you look between the V and the A, these two bounding boxes actually overlap. So let's take a look at how we can play with the spacing or the kerning between all of these letters. 
So let's, let's select our monospace node right now. So we're focused on this one up here. And we're going to come back to text. So we're going to play with the tracking. So when we move the tracking, it changes the spaces between these bounding boxes. Now, this tracking is different than what kerning is. Tracking is essentially a linear scaling of the kerning values. And because in Courier, the kerning values are all set to be the same, so the kerning between each letter is going to be the same, we see the spaces between each of these bounding boxes when we play with the tracking. They're all the same as well. And that's what I mean by a scaling of the kerning. It's not changing any of the kerning values. It's just expanding them or bringing them closer together. Now let's contrast that to our variable width. So recall with a monospace font, all the bounding boxes are the same, and the spaces between all those bounding boxes is the same as well. But right now we see with our Times New Roman, first of all, the bounding boxes are not the same, uh, same widths. And we, when we play with our tracking to make things a little bit more clear, so I'll expand the tracking a little bit, we can see the spaces between those bounding boxes are not the same either. So the space between this V and the A is, is different than between the A and the R. So when we have our text icon selected up here, we, we come down to these advanced controls, and this is where we can play with the kerning information. So let's just skip over forced monospace for now, and I want to look at this checkbox here, use font-defined kerning. So if we click on this and we disable this, and if you, before I do that, let's just, just keep an eye on the spaces, particularly these two spaces here, because what's going to happen is all these spaces are going to snap to the same, same width. So there we go. So I've disabled use font-defined kerning, and now we see there's, just like in the monospace font, we see that there's equal, val or equal spacing between each of these bounding boxes. The difference still here is each of these bounding boxes is sized relative to a particular letter. So this M is much wider than this E. Whereas if you look at the monospace font, those are all the exact same. So we can play with that as well. We can come down to this forced monospace. So forced monospace, our value, it's a slider that goes from value 0 to value 1. 0 is set up right now, meaning don't force monospace. Use the font definition, bounding box sizes, essentially. And if we slide this up to a 1 and keep an eye on those boxes, all those boxes are going to, as I slide up to 1, are going to change to a uh, fixed width. So I'll run this slider slowly so we can get a sense of it. So there they go. And they all, I'm up at 1 now, they've all snapped into place in the same size. Now the reason that kerning exists and different kerning between different letters is because if I take these bounding boxes off, so I'll go back to... Uh, element number two and I'll disable these bounding boxes on the outside. Oops. So that does look pretty ridiculous and that's, that's kind of the look you're going for. But the point here is really just to demonstrate how these controls work. Now let's say that these options here aren't quite enough to give you exactly what you want in terms of control. Well you can come up to these icons over here. So if I click on this first one, you see a cursor show up here so I can actually do my edits in line. I don't really like that. I'd prefer just to do it up here but the options there if you, if you want. The second one though is the one that says allow manual kerning. So when I click on that you'll see these little green nodes show up under each letter and I can grab those and I can drag them wherever I want. So this gives us total control. It's not it's not just adjusting the space between letters. I can move this these things wherever I want. So I got complete and total control. I can if I want to, if I grab this R, I can constrain it by holding down Alt and I can move it, I can constrain it to, to, to either axes. So I, so I can move this one over here, whatever, I can move this one over here. So I'm going to turn off this cursor here, and I'm going to drag and select this particular node here. And you'll see, we know it's highlighted because of those red brackets around it. I can clear selected manual kerning, so that's going to pop this one back into place. Or I can clear all, so the R and the T should hop back into place. So that's it for today, everyone. Thanks so much for watching, and we will talk to you guys soon.